Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. This, the more I explain about this, the worse our experience will be. So I think it's best to just dive into the deep end. Let's begin. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push. This is me. <laughs> this is this me, is me but my version's a little nicer. Did every day of every month of every year. Yep. And although others might have considered it soul ending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. I am happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. Ah, my worst no nightmare. showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Empty chat. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. That's my cue. Oh yeah, that's bringing me back. Got the crouch. Yep, yep. Partition Corp. Providing partitioning for 56 years. <laughs> The pride of Partition Corp. Oh yeah, it's all familiar. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. My goodness, Perhaps sorry. Simply missed a memo. I'm adjusting my mouse over here. That's causing some vomiting, I'm sure. Is the no capture smooth on this? Stanley looked, I hope so. He couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Where's the trace? Someone's tracing someone. Oh, damn. Can we zoom in? Got some serious detail on these documents now. I don't think you can zoom in yet. Or maybe you can't ever. I want to read this stuff. Initially, when this game came out, even before I really... Uh, understood what it was it immediately gave the impression of being the kind of game where you want to try to pay attention to little details like that and now having played it once before and knowing that this is the ultra deluxe edition that feeling has been amplified probably 10 times over for me in my in my head here so i am very curious about my surroundings and having said that, have probably already missed several things. Sorry, real quick, I gotta, before I continue any further, I gotta get my mouse where it's supposed to be so I'm not driving y'all crazy moving that thing around. There we go. Hmm. Same here, buddy. Well, no sign of anybody. That says Quater, doesn't it? Sales in this Quater. That's important info. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Left or right, left or right. You got to pick left or right right now. I know he said left. We can go right. We can go right. The door's open on the right. If we want to go right, we can go right. But we should probably go left. We should go left. You think we should go left? But we might want to go right. I don't know. If you need to go left or right, you got to tell me right now. Left or right, left or right, right now. Left or right, right. Turn around. All right, good. Nope. Can't turn around. Damn it. 
Center it is. No, nothing. No secret wall ending. All right. Well, yeah, you know what? Let's go right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I had a hankering. Had a hankering for some admiration time in the employee lounge. Also to take a peek inside our 450 office. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It does have and a really pleasant aura. Detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Mm -hmm. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Delightful. It's well designed. Look at this little sunken area. I mean, it could use a few more seats. Yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. I want to sit down. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Yeah. Really worth it. Yeah. Glad you understand. Look, I can get lost in here, man. Whoosh. Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. You can't hurt me. It's possible that this is why everyone left. Don't, I, it's not my fault, dude. Oh, hold on. What's this? What Stan is it about this place? Dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. The weeks I've spent here, they feel... What does this say? They feel like mere seconds. Seconds by extension feel so short they might as well not exist. It is the nature of this room, its essence. It calls to me. Something of my soul. Oh, it's difficult to read. Would I say the lounge has spoken to me? Yes, but it's a cryptic tongue created specifically for this very communication. Sacred in its purpose. What in the world? Okay. That's bizarre. I mean, like, this is so detailed. That's, that's, that, I mean, those are all readable words. I can't read them very well. It's very interesting. Fifth annual subcommittee meeting of internal revenue analysis for committees of the Royal Revenue Dissensions Club. No girls. <laughs> <laughs> the committee hereby proposes the following that all internal revenues be reviewed exclusively by lateral uh, by oh no by internal members of royally appointed subcommittees that human beings excepting those in this club smell number three dude I am so wasted right now ale fiend insert witty comment here I think that's what those empty lines on the bottom are for. More more witty comments. Thanks for the 76 months. Yeah, now this is pretty much all we've done so far. But, I mean, but at last, there's a little more to it than that, I think. And took the first open door on his left to get back to business. I think there's something amiss. And so he detoured through the maintenance section walked straight ahead to the opposite door and got back on track. Big red button. Big, 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 big red button. Big red button. Big red button! But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. Yeah. So now in order to get back, he needed to go, um, uh, uh da, 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 da. from here, it's, um, left. Oh, all right. I guess that's pretty much it. I played the original Blue, but uh, this will be my first time playing the oh, ult no. ultra deluxe oh, version. Right, my, my bad. Yeah, no, that's 
That's on me, buddy. No, 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 not the right. Shouldn't have come down here. I have ever said it was to the right. What was I thinking? Oh, we just go back up the elevator, it's right? Day. Oh dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Just go, just go back where we came. Now, let's I, just, I just wanted to hit the button, down, really. I just left, down, I can hit the button left, again. Right. Yep. Yeah, yep. Okay. Okay. Yes. I've got it now. This okay. story is yep. absolutely, definitely this way. That doesn't seem right. You sure? Okay. Hmm. Oh yeah, there we go. No, 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 no. This isn't right at all. You're that was fast. Yeah, yet this is all a spoiler. Quick oh, step. Boy. Close your eyes. All right, my bad. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. We just, we just have to get back to. Look away, trap. Who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far. Fire track, hmm? Okay. From the top. We gotta go to 104. 104 got fired. We learned something. Okay. Squid game, yeah. Doo -doo. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, I'll go to the meeting room. We don't need to be so wildly contrarian right out of the gate. When Stanley wait, wait, what? Oh shit. No, I no, I restarted. I swear I definitely restarted the game over, completely fresh. Everything should be Oh, did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere? Or... Did I? Hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay, then. It's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's find the story. Okay. Let's go this way to find the story. Oh my goodness. All of a sudden, the Stanley Parable is an open world game. Oh my. Well, this might give us an opportunity to go find Office 104. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, shit. Okay, hold on. I'll it's say it. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise <laughs> hey. you there definitely was a story here before. Give me a little do we bit. Need, do we need to restart the game again? Uh, I mean, I just well, I started. It's likely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again, but it's got to be better than this. This is fine. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? I mean, the hallways were a little drab, I'll admit. Wampus, thank you for the reset. Appreciate it. Quinn Sprinkles, Elfine, Blue Egg, and Ham. Welcome back in, guys. All thank you for the subscriptions. Gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I'm happy to oblige. If you just freaking let me this time. Don't show me an empty wall, damn it. Okay, yep, it's worse. Yeah, it got much worse. I'm remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? But when I turn around, there's just going to be a wall there. Oh, okay, now we're good. Hmm. Did we miss anything? Can't remember if that one was on before. Aha! I knew we'd miss something. We did. The story. Here it comes. Oh, how convenient! Well, there we go. Yeah, the never-ending. Oh wait. Never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. Ah, oh, this seems problematic. Oh, no, okay, we're good. Yeah, no, this looks right. Now this... Well, I'll be honest, I don't recognize this place at all. Here we go. Is this the story? I don't think so. 
I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It, is that correct? Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? Well, do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Hey! Congratulations! Wow, cool! I know you put in a lot of hard work. I did! It really paid off, so good job. I've been working so hard. Oh, no. Wait. No, I don't feel right about this at all. No, I won! We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. I did! Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. I did the wrong thing hey, on purpose. I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time. I have to restart. No. Oh, my W. I set a new speedrun world record. He took it away. Ah, oh, damn it. All, All right, here we go. Solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Thank goodness. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Yeah, this is what other games have been missing. Thank you, sir. I am on rails. You see? The line knows where the story is. Mm -hmm. It's over in this direction. Mm -hmm. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Gotta follow the line. Here's a thought. Oh, shit. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? Or to put it another way, I gotta see. is the story of no destination still a story? Just gotta look. Simply by the act of moving okay. forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Okay, Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. That's okay. I got a line. We both agree that the nature of existence is in fact a byproduct of one subjective experience of that existence, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, if my experience of your existence rests inside of your subjective experience of this office, is this office, in fact, the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Pro whoa, 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 whoa. Probably. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. A really well, bit weird. Apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. <laughs> He was absolutely right. When you're right, you're right. He, th th this fixed everything. Precisely what the doctor ordered. Well, this line ain't gonna follow itself. Or maybe it does. Perhaps I am the line. I mean, we're kind of calling everything into question these days. Is it even really here? Are any of us? What? I said, are any of us really here? What is reality even? Employee 432 peer reviews. They have a whole room for these? And a wall of file cabinets. Oh my god. How the hell? My brain. Cut the music. Okay. Go back and look at that fern. Stanley, this fern will be very important later in the story. Make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. You won't want to miss anything. You got it? Okay. Ferns are like D-tier plants, to be honest. Oh, my. No, no, no. Line, 
You do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? It's not even the right time. They asked me to put it in twice. I feel cheated. Oh, no, 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 not again, Line. How could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you... Oh, I can't tell Another you one fired. What the hell with it. Restart. Oh, damn it. All right. He's not even going to guide me this time. Trust me to do it on my own. I mean, I, I mean, I, I think I can you still know, follow Stan, out. All right, never mind. I say, forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're in confused me, people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. All this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in? Well, I don't know. How about this direction? Sure. Sounds like fun. Now. Yes, this is exciting. Mm -hmm. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? Go wild. Use your imagination. I was hoping we Whatever could wander through an endless it, series of right turns. I'm ready for it. Oh, foiled. Yeah, well, this seems... Oh, no, not oh not damn it. Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it, and we should be fine. I love the way it makes it look like it was following us the entire time. No, not my first time. It has been long enough, though, where a lot of this still feels fairly fresh. But I definitely remember this experience specifically. It's so good. Mine's got a mind of its own. Ah, a choice. Yeah. We get to make a decision. Love that. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay. So I know that each door no. has to lead somewhere, which means that somewhere at the place where we're trying to I go, won't. there must be a reverse door. I won't do it. It's here. And then you can't make me. Means that our destination I'm going to stand still. Counter inverted reverse doors. In fact, I'm going to look at the wall. So starting from the right, let us ask, pout. Will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? I'm just pouting. Since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Oh, glad you figured it out. Another victory for logic. Good job. Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits. I'll do one circle walk just to say you. Oh, no. Oh, we got here already? My goodness. Oh, hold up, what's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? It's all one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game what, eight, eight times? <laughs> it's really how all this goes? It's all determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this, this thing, wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really? No, it can't be. I, I don't want it to be. I, I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't. Do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. Oh no. And the timer to stopped? Does that mean um did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The, Seems um, like it. Whatever it is that made this schedule. How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? Yeah. So okay. Certainly. I guess now we just wait, you know. I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story. Wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. 
Well, in the meantime, if you No, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I forgot about that. Well, all right then. Probably best we just stay here this time. I think I think just right here inside these four walls, yeah. This will be for the best. Yeah. Or maybe just maybe, maybe just a little bit of peeking. Maybe maybe just a little a little bit of a walk. His co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Maybe I'll just. I bet they'll let me go to the meeting room now. I know I was intentionally breaking your rules before, and I apologize, but I I, I can play ball now. All right. I learned my lesson. Just let me, let me go through the door here. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, yeah. he entered the door on his left. See? Look at me go. I'm being cooperative. Let's let's let this little sucker play out, huh? Yeah. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. This is helpful information. If you're looking for an office job, these slides will be very good for you. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel on all the text. This will ensure a calm and productive work environment. Absolutely. What do people want? Things, more money, money. Things, but with money to buy more things. Graphs and graphs about things and money. We have our new product. Violet James, you are fired for daring write down happy feelings on the board. The stock market is somewhere here. <laughs> this is this is all very good stuff. Bi-quarterly post-review review. 402 and 405 want to get rid of the death sport portion in the primary review schedule, but I think that's a stupid idea. More water coolers, more water cooler heaters. Charts need to be more hip to appeal to teenage demographic. Find teenagers to put in teenage demographic. Big net. Some sort of child trap. That phrasing is questionable. Throw something in the ideas bin. Monetize free to play. This is where it all went wrong, dude. Dev saw the Stanley Parable joke and thought, but what if we did? Hire someone to synergize papers. Papers are too synergized. Fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the paper synergizing guy. Complete today's unfinished agenda items. Write next day's agenda. Reflect. R.I.P. Franz. Bear F for Franz, please. Oh, we got some TPS reports on the table. Puppy dog salary is unfortunately plummeting. Hate to see it. F is for Franz, that's true. Oh boy. We know what that's all about. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I can handle that. Oh my god, so fancy. Yes. Be 
because the boss knows that what the boss says goes. If the boss has suffered losses, then that's what the boss chose. Bars. Extreme bathrooms. The beige pages. That's very good. Are hostile takeovers the new biannual percentage? Those are some words. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this? What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Mm -hmm. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Wow. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. How convenient. This room is nuts. Can't imagine that feels good to walk into if you're the person who's actually supposed to be here. Why don't you want to shine a floodlight in your own face? Uh, I think this is a hole. Oh wait, no, there's a there's an elevator there, right? Yeah, okay. It's dark as hell in here. Can't see a thing. Yes, we're going down. Oh, there we go. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. I'm pretty sure I set the brightness right. I think it's just supposed to be real dark in there. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Call extension 914 immediately. I don't have a phone. Oh, sorry, hold on. Let me disable that command real quick. There we go. Yeah, we're gonna go that way. Gotta call extension 914. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Oh. Really? I actually can't remember. Hmm. There's probably a phone, though. I bet they got a phone. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Nah, I'm gonna find a phone back here. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. But there's a phone first, right? That doesn't look very good. That seems dangerous. Well, 
Here we go. I think I died. Oh, yeah. Nope, that... My, my legs are shattered. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Is that Perhaps a phone? death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end. Call extension 914. Farewell, Stanley. Call extension 914. Don't smash me, bro! Oh. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley what? was taken into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body. Killing him instantly. What? Oh, shit. Well, I'll, I'll be going then. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? This seems familiar too, but I did not expect to get here so soon. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? This is like the last thing you're supposed to get to, I think. How do we just inadvertently happen upon it from the beginning. Yeah, this spoils some other endings, too. We should probably just get the hell out of here. We'll just pretend we didn't make it here. I don't know if there's like an exit up here or something, though. And close your eyes again, Stanley Wright. Don't look. Don't look, buddy. <laughs> There's plenty more of that. Oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Am I already gonna... Uh... Okay. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Mm -hmm. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. Oh, God. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. I mean, you're Stop right. Now and it'll be your only true choice. You're right, aren't you? I mean, yeah, we can just quit. Quit to menu. She's right about that. Before we get smashed into itty bitty bits. But we can keep playing. This is the story of a man. Oh, we don't need to see that, though. So that's pretty much that ending, I think. It's just exercise your free will and stop playing. Because I, well, I, could, I couldn't tell you for a certain. I, I Nothing's certain about this game. But I do believe we've more or less restarted from scratch. If co workers were gone, what could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So let's, uh, let's follow the... Oh. <laughs> well then. Oh, new content? Yeah. What does that mean, new content? I'm curious too. Let's go find out. <laughs> this is so quintessential Stanley parable here, dude.
Creepy. Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. You're welcome. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. He's not wrong. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Same here, Kevin. Let's go check it out. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Uh. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere? Or, or, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, there right, we go. Finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Same here, buddy. Let's go. Bear Pog. New content. Mm. Mm. Shitty plywood elevator. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Mostly tedious. Mm. It's as if them. Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. He sounds like me. Zelt. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> just, just seeing this. Oh man, that's such a great first thing to walk into. All right, all right. Let's see. It's the jump circle. Okay. Oh boy. Something I've tried to do in this game many a time. Jumps! I can jump in the jump circle! Wow! Because, yeah, you can't normally jump here. If you go in here, you can jump. <laughs> and I got two achievements. I got... Uh, jump or Attempt to jump outside of the jump circle, and it says you can't jump. And then I got another achievement that says awarded for getting any of the other achievements. Thanks, game. Oh, I gotta use all. Well, I, I, I'm, maybe I shouldn't waste all my jumps. I don't want to need some jumps later and see another jump circle and realize I wasted them all so giddily in the beginning. Let's conserve our jumps. Let's be smart about our is, jumps. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Nah, I think that's it. Hell, they might not even give me another jump circle, dude. You know what, Kevin? Let's make the most of it. You never know when you're gonna get a, another opportunity like this, you know? You never know how many jump circles there are gonna be in your life. Best to utilize it while you can. Yes! Yes! Jumping! That's it. I'm not able to jump anymore. Well, all right. Another elevator. I enjoyed Stanley, it while we had it. I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? Genuinely, if yes. New content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 yeah. hours of new content right there. I'm yeah, expecting you to. 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. You could say There's literally anything I would expect it to be in the game. Now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. Especially if it's you reading the dictionary. <laughs> That's 
it? <laughs> oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens <sighs> when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. As you should. It's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. Based Kevin. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks, just you and me. Having a great time together, like always. Yeah. What do you say, friend? I like that, buddy. Let's do it. Oh, God. Kevin, I think we got an issue, man. Did you yell at them on Twitter? I think they're exacting their revenge. Well, that looks more familiar. Psst. Stanley, come over here. In the vent. I want to show you something. Hang on, hang on, buddy. I got to see what's going on up here. Oh, we got multiple options now. Oh, boy. I mean, I'll let y'all choose. Because I'm curious what the uh what the populace would decide in this moment do you want to go vent or do you want to go open door vent or door vent or not vent it's a trap that's what i thought i think i think we got a uh, majority vent though Yeah, let's go this way. He didn't even sound like he was talking to us from the vent, dude. That's pretty suspicious. Who left a mug in here? I would never abandon my, fr my friend Kevin Brighting, who, okay. I, who I know you personally. How cheap and unsatisfying the new ultra deluxe content turned out to be. Oh, well, says you. About the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. Oh, shit. You brought the printer! Slash printer scanner combination machine. Nice, thanks, bud. I love this thing. I guess there's a door over here, too. Ooh. I call it the memory zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories wow. so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. I remember that. I was there. Oh man. I wouldn't mind going back in the memory zone, dude. I'll take a time machine back to 2013, please. Ah, 2013, when the Stanley Parable was released. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was solid with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. This is phenomenal. A renewal. Welcome back. This is so good. Yeah, I, I can't use my jumps anymore. I used them all up, remember? Not to mention, there's not even a jump circle out there. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember this, too. The Indie Box Collector's Edition. I kind of wish I'd gotten that. Audience award. BAFTA 
awarded to the Stanley Parable. <laughs> Postcards from 2013. <laughs> this is so good. Greatest wealth is memory. It's wild how genuinely nostalgic this game makes me for 2013. I'm feeling similarly, actually. Yeah, like I was... I was kind of allowing this to be a bit of a time capsule for me, but now they're really just kind of making that the focal point. And I'm, I'm liking it. Even if they're doing it a little, uh, you know, like tongue-in-cheek. Is this a 2013 dollar? Yeah. No, it's a 2003 dollar. What the hell? Stanley Parable demo. The go outside achievement, of course. The unachievable achievement. Yeah, th this is the before times, right? Pre COVID. New York Times article, of course. I remember those days. Creators surprisingly down to earth. Fifty percent off designer hat, but a small creature owns the other half. <laughs> well, it's Stanley. This is lovely. Rip little Stanley. Oh, he's adorable. Little guy. Je suis dans la and over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art. Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. <laughs> Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim. It was. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. Absolutely now, true. It's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. Every single game, dude. Kind of sad that I skipped that song. I didn't realize it was going to cut it off when we went in there. That was a pleasant moment out there. Hey, that's not the Stanley Parable. Well, actually, it might be the Stanley Parable. I forgot. That is, though. I remember that. Oh, my goodness. They're getting real meta with it now. Are these, like, Unity screenshots? Memory zone maintenance. Well, 
Was there a portal room? Yeah, now that I think about it, I think there might have actually been a portal room before. Oh yeah, I remember those. This is, I love that they're doing this. This is the perfect way to get into the, uh, the new content. The end is never the end, is never the end. Hell, if this is the new content. Here's another moving passage. I'll take this it. This time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. This it's it's just the perfect level of self-awareness, especially for this game, which was already incredibly self-aware. Preparing snake oil salesman routine. <laughs> Imagine making new content of your game about how well the old content did. And like everything they're saying so far is just I don't know, like I don't want to get too uh snobby about it, but it's real, right? Like this is th these are real feelings I'm sure they had and they elected to present them in this fashion so perfectly. It's just so unique to this experience. I don't really think any other game could pull this off. I need to go back now? Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Yeah, my first thought was the beginner's guide, but even the be even the beginner's Wait, guide was not. Hang on. Like approaching I it. Call this part of the like this. Before. What's this? What's down here? The beginner's got is a lot more serious, from what I remember. Yeah, this game is just completely unique. Steam oh, reviews. No. God, no. Standard, <laughs> it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online oh, video game man. distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's being collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? This is incredible. Don't read those, yeah. Oh boy, here we go. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. Oh, I, I feel fairly confident that that was a real posted review. Yeah, I would be surprised if it wasn't. This is amazing. I mean, they had the typos and everything in there that were certainly believable. I know that I wanted to make that point as well. The fact that there's a good review that's just sort of like tucked away that you can't even read. That's got to be intentional, like messaging with that of like, yeah, you know, they're there. But when you see all these negative ones, that's all you can focus on. And it's, you know, made the focal point as you enter the room. Although that being said, they do have a couple of discarded, not recommended reviews as well. So maybe I'm looking into that a bit too much. Oh, 
Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley? I'm not preachy, am I? Well... You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. There's times. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always... Well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did. But maybe it wasn't. Oh dear. What an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. No, Kevin. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. Kevin, no. Remember that 10 out of 10 Destructoid review? You were so proud. You gave it a nice frame and everything, Kevin. Come on, buddy. Remember the good times. Remember that? I love the game. Remember, Kevin? What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then... Then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. I, this, I don't know about this plank of wood here, dude. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to walk on that. Yeah? Alright. Oh, boy. Oh, shit. Oh, it's just blocked off. I thought this was going to be something new. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you, with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. <laughs> oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. That sounds about right. I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or maybe a many. <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this, <laughs> and whether they'll edit the rating of their Steam review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on before I went about this whole exercise of making the skip button. Although I have to imagine that after seeing this exciting new technology at work, surely whoever it is runs Steam will instantly run out and implement a new feature to make it possible to edit one's review, merely because of this very situation. Yes. I think that's quite likely. Same here. Or perhaps they'll simply grant this particular user the ability to change their review, so that the feature is not widely abused. Look, I would even be okay with Steam altering this particular review so that it reads as something more beneficial. Something along the lines of, this game is the best game. Hmm. Let me start over. How about this? From the, from the ashes of depravity rises the weird. phoenix of quality. How else to describe the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? 
Such a I feel obligated to let him complete at least one of these trains of thought. Loved video game properties of all time. The additions and changes made to this expansion will surely resonate in the annals of the history of all media ever made. He said annals. It's perhaps true to say that no mistakes are forever etched in stone, for the stone into which the Stanley Parable was carved has itself been transmuted, offering a message of hope to those who have ever erred in their judgment. You are not beyond redemption. You may change, and you may become more, so much more than you were before. If there is any message to be taken from the Stanley Parable Good Ultra Lord. Deluxe, it is this. What a fortune, a privilege, a joy it is to have had such an experience. It leaves me hopeful that as a community, as a world, there is time for us to become our greatest selves, as great as we ever could dream of in our wildest, most ambitious visions for a If it hasn't future. happened already, wow. now, Stanley, this is your opportunity to write it's, this review for the Ultra Deluxe version it's on Steam. Review. It's the review I've always dreamed of receiving. And just I, harvest I all them up votes. It's simply too wonderful. I have to experience this just one more time oh no from the from oh no of... yeah sorry pal okay welcome back stanley now i should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer that last one was well i want to say maybe 30 45 minutes it's not unendurable by any means but it's well there's really only so much i can ramble on to myself about i know it's shocking isn't it but at any rate i do suggest that we not press the button again I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just wait. How do we get out of here? We hit the button. We did the door. Clearly. Stanley, Stanley, St Hi Stanley, there. please don't push the button again. It's been twelve hours. Oh shit! You've just been frozen there. Oh, oh I don't god. I know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer. And my god, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. Yeah, jeez. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times. And there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button. And if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here. And more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again. I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch it. And I have to believe, I have to know that sooner or later, no matter how much I plead with you, you're going to press the I'm gonna, button again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push the you? button again, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna push the button oh, again. Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh god, all the lights oh, went out. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I, I think it's been a week. Or well, two weeks? I've been sitting here all Plant time. died. Just sitting here, not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking and you saying nothing. Pretty much. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. That's what I'm realizing now, Stanley. I'm realizing that I needed to know that someone was listening. I needed there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the outcomes, not the story. None of that matters anymore. I'll give it all up. I'll give up every branching path. I'll burn my story to the ground. Oh my God. One single thing I need, and God, I can see now that I need it more than anything, is to know that someone else is taking it in. All right, These see you in a couple years. Saying, I... Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? That's pretty much my life. I it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley days months i lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past and when that feeling had begun to subside what took its place is what i can only describe as the collapse of every moment i have ever experienced my entire life good lord all of them collapsed down into a single instant in that instant i could see myself clearly calmly with a collected heart 
It was an impossibly rich wellspring of both delight and disgust simultaneously. I was consumed by it. I could do nothing but wallow in it for what felt like an eternity, for what I now know was far less. You see, it was a revelation for me. It was unlike anything I had ever known. It was a space without consequence, without action or outcome. It was divorced entirely from the question of free will that you and I have squabbled over for so long. There could be no one ending, no singular outcome of events, not if all events existed in the same moment, and I felt freed. I felt unburdened by the need to manifest a particular outcome into being. I saw that I could allow myself to exist along all timelines, and that each of them was simply a strand in the web of my being. It was incredible. Damn. The spaciousness, the equanimity of the moment, both singular and infinite. For the longest time, this was my experience. Sounds great. And then, this moment passed. And the most unyielding fear I have ever known crept into my mind. Oh no! And it is this sensation that I have been experiencing now for longer than I could have ever expected was possible. Oh shit! I have been waiting for you. Not that you might save me or do something to fix it, but merely to state for you the plain fact of this manner of existence. I wish you to feel afraid as I do. That perhaps one day this state of mind will consume you as well. Perhaps you will somehow, in some way, have to live as I do now. And I wish for you to know how excruciating it is, and for you to be in true terror of its eventual arrival. If I can only do this, only this one thing, perhaps it will bring me the smallest moment of peace in the darkness. Okay. S so sorry? I didn't mean to do I did, okay okay I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the button you there hello hello oh shit Still nothing back here. I wonder if I can interact with the clock. Nope. Nope. Well. There we go. Oh, damn it. That's probably been going off for a few hundred centuries. Ah, let's get the hell out of here. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and been eating away at him this whole time. Demands. But then he's talking too much. They said first he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to nothing. We get a world where someone will say, Oh, there should be a skip button. You should be able to freeze Stanley in place while the narrator sits there forever and ever. We want all of this in the new Stanley parable. We demand it. And then, because it was said, because it was spoken, now it simply has to happen. The most immediate desires, every single thing demanded by every person at every moment in time. If someone wants it, then it's a crime not to bring it into being. Amen. Have we been given to indulging every fleeting whim for no reason other than to do so? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, 100%. It seems that this is now the world we live in. Without it a doubt. That we are a people living in such bleakness and discomfort with ourselves that our entertainment is now our lives. Pretty much. 
It has come to represent us. It absolutely must speak to who we are as people. Yeah, you're, you're nailing it. Eyes. Without our entertainment, we have nothing. Indeed. Without entertainment, we would have to face inward toward the cruel bleakness inside ourselves. Don't talk about we that anymore. To look at our deeper nature. Yeah, I don't like that. The resounding emptiness gazing back with unyielding aggression. You're going to make me skip so, again. So because of this... We require that our amusements and our playthings and our flights of fancy be so impossibly captivating that they consume all of our attention, turn our heads completely away from the bleakness. Well, yeah. We have demanded that our entertainment be the collapse of ourselves. Pretty much. What a pitiful reflection of humanity these entertainments are. What a shameful mirror to the human spirit they project. I mean, it's better mad. than being I'm a not human. Mad about any of this. I'm at peace with it. I am the calm center of gravity around which these perversions hurl themselves. I am a waypoint for reasonable and collected discourse. They're the ones who are mad. They're the ones who couldn't stand the idea of me using my game to try to say something. Maybe they were just jealous of me. Yes. Yes, of course. They've been jealous of me this whole time. They are mired in fear and insecurity and cannot help but attempt to tear me down. What a sad state of affairs. When you read these reviews now, you can see it. You can taste the bitter resentment. It's awful. And my, how good does it feel now to speak truth to these words, to finally allow these thoughts out, contained and managed for so long, neutered and sterilized. At last I am free to truly think to feel it must be that they were so discontent with themselves they couldn't help but leave a negative review on steam perhaps it says far more about them than it ever said about me perhaps the state of their psychological being was in such tatters and my constitution and willpower are so ironclad in comparison perhaps it was this state that they sought some outlet through which to tear me down this, you can see, is clearly why they felt the need to expect that the game be funny. That it be filled with yucks and whimsical humor. Japes, Walla Walla, Jaffs. From start to finish. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? Are we they looping now? Screened. They gnashed their teeth. We're looping now, buddy? Come on. How do you not expect me to skip at that point? I was hearing you out on your little ramble in there. I'm a big fan of the fact that we've spent a, probably a good 30 minutes in this room and it's been entertaining the whole time. <laughs> it's a well-written loop, certainly. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad we heard it the whole way through. The new content has been has been delivering on all fronts. The end is never 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 the Oh shit. That's new. I mean, I'm probably pretty thirsty. I think I've been in here for a couple millennia. This building's been pretty structurally sound all this time, huh? Suppose it's about time. Yep, there we go. A renewal. To Skelly. Thank you for the tier 3 resubscription. 45 months. Appreciate that. Bear hugs for him. My bad. I gotta get this over here, too. Thank you, the Wolf of Gaming, for the resub as well. Thank you for the bear hugs, guys. Welcome back into the pile. Well, I'm certain if we skip forward a little more, a path will naturally be created for us. Oh. Well, 
That's kind of nice. Can't grab it. Well, okay. <laughs> That's great. If only I hadn't used all my jumps, right? Yeah. We might be able to survive. I'm playing Cloud Gardens, huh? For real. I mean, this is all game, so it makes sense that they would include that, too. This is such a nice song. I like this. I just want to stay here. This is the ending. This is this is the nirvana he described before the all-encompassing fear. So if we just stay here and never hit the button, then we've achieved nirvana and have no need for future well, needs, I guess. Anything. We this is enlightenment. We made it. Enlightenment is a small room with a skip button where nature has decided to plunge its way into a corner. Home. This is home. We need a bear zen. Yeah, that'd be good. Nice while it lasted. I fucking knew it. Skipping Nirvana, I mean, yeah, that says more about me, doesn't it? Oh my god. I like I like this one a lot less. You have returned. Fitting Wainer. Thanks for the resub, knee. Return to the call of the void. Thanks for the bear hugs. Welcome back to the bear pile. Where's the back button? I want to go, go back. Back to Nirvana. Oh boy. Oh shit. You coming back? Nope. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. see the other side first. I'm too curious. Oh. That's it. 
I think that's the ending. All right. That's a heck of an ending. Cool. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Now what's the new content door gonna be? New new content? Oh, look at that. They needed two outlets to power this bad boy. That's a heck of a sign. Oh, good. You notice my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. <laughs> I want to go this way, though. It's behind the new content door. Oh, boy. Let's see what they got for us for the new new content. Oh, I don't get to watch the presentation again. I guess once was enough. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable. <laughs> Thirty-two more jumps, yeah. Disappointing, this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. Don't say the that. Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further, which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever. The Stanley Parable 2. Yo! I was looking the wrong way. The sequel! Wow! Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Yeah! All the new territory will cover with a fully-fledged sequel. All right! An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. <laughs> These promotional images are amazing. Four, two, seven. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long term franchising potential. One of these is named Wiz Fizz. I want that real drink. This is outstanding. Officepainting.tga. <laughs> Can I click the full screen for you? That's so good. Let's go see the investor showcase. Since we are investors. Better TSP, of course. <laughs> Two ferns. The color red! <laughs> Already the first wave of new content is old hat. They're back. Two doors. Logo ideas. I'm a big fan of that one, personally. If his, if his tongue goes any further into his cheek, it'll be sticking out of his neck. <laughs> now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I feel <laughs> that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. That's what I hear. 
<laughs> Dark Souls 2. <laughs> Parentheses city. That's very good. Aladdin, though. I mean, yeah, of course. There's no Robin Williams in Aladdin, too? Oh, well, in that case. Not so sure about that one. This is exciting stuff. Let's take the new content bus. Oh, never mind. We're going this way. Oh, it was Dan Castellaneta? Well, Dan Castellaneta's still pretty damn good. Wowie. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Reassurance bucket. The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. Hear your name in the game. Oh, wow. I gotta try that. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. 100%. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? What does this say? Names. Everyone's got one. Well, here we go. I'm excited. Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. <laughs> right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Nice. Here, let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. All right, here we go. Play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take mm -hmm. a deep breath, mm -hmm. clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. Hi, I'm Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim. I've always been Jim. Sleeping and waking as Jim. From day Falling one, I've been Jim. And being heartbroken as Jim. Seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim. Jim and is starting Jim to sound less like a real name. Into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Are you really, truly Jim right now? I feel if like we so, made Jim up for this. Step forward and press the button. Like, okay, I mean, I'm still Jim, of course, but... Hopefully this says my name. That being Jim. Jim. Yo! <laughs> wow! Cool! Yes, you see? Yeah! Thrill, what a rush! That was you! The it was me! You. Do it again, do it again. Ah, oh, here we go, yeah. Jim. Ooh. Dude. It's even harder the second time. If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. No doubt. Let's take a break from the Jim button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. Oh, sorry, my name is Jim Ethereal. As you can tell. Oh, there, cowboy. Sometimes a person can be too much, Jim. <laughs> I'm putting the Jim button away. Hey, no! Otherwise, my Jim! Start to lose Jim. All my Jim button, Jim. don't! Actually, oh. Jim. Don't do it! Oh, no. He made it meld into the floor. I don't know who I am anymore. Who am I?! Oh, shit. Maybe this works. That's nah, not Jim Button. Damn it. Maybe the tiny one. Ah. I, ke I keep losing the precious moments, man. I gotta appreciate them while they're here. I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable too. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. <laughs> <laughs> I sure did. I sure heard Jim. We got to see the reassurance bucket. I'm also curious where this door goes. 
Oh, please no screenshots. I mean, I need to know what happens if I press the print screen button. Oh, I thought it closed the game on me. I went to desktop and I thought the game <laughs> closed as soon as I attempted to take a screenshot. Consistent quality with just the right amount of change. The baby is all grown up. I mean, that baby would only be, what, like 10 now, right? But it got a job. Maybe F12. Yeah, I'll try that. Be one of the thousands of people who took a screenshot of the screenshot area. Didn't do anything. All right. Oh, hold on. <laughs> that's their new lo or that's their new mascot, right? Tui. Epilogue. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? I guess. Yes, yes it would go at the end of the um uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Yeah, we don't need to do this yet. Gotta get some merch, dude. New content compendium. That's me. All right, we gotta check out the reassurance bucket. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical, that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, that's I'm a specific happy to say criticism. That much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, anytime you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold onto the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? I really yes, can't. The bucket is the perfect solution. I mean, you, come on. you told me it was mostly like a kind of fuzzy magic that goes into game development, so I really I, I got no idea what to know, what to expect at this point. I'll hold the bucket, though. <laughs> Can you feel it? Uh, the glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just I mean, I feel it. has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. <laughs> I do feel a lot more attractive. I want it on my head. I guess I'm just carrying around the reassurance bucket now. All right. Thanks for the bucket. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. Infinite hole? What is that? Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on get well someday and happy 12th birthday. Which would you go with? Gotta be the 12th birthday. You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Get well someday, wow. it is. Rude. You had that prepared. Unless you had a release 
mechanism for both sets of balloons. Pretty fricked up, dude. I wish I could put this bucket on your head. <laughs> or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. I'm pretty certain mine would have been better, but all right. Is this the same room? A renewal. Scary cloud. New jump circle. I'm out of jump still. <laughs> You know what? No. Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Please, Parable I need more jumps. Well. It's a oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the I didn't know circle. if I would see another jump mm. circle. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece then. Oh, god damn it. Should have saved my jumps, I know. Oh, well. I mean, we gotta go get that free achievement. Settings world champion. I gotta see what that is. Hold on a second. Where was the... Collectibles is A9. So that's over there, which means... That thing is this way. Wait, that's the jump circle. I'm so confused. It's behind me. Oh, it's on the other side. Right? Maybe that's in there. Huh. All right. Let's go get that free achievement. That's enticing. Pull the lever, receive your new achievement. No more steps, it just works. Oh boy. Now here's something special. Yeah. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Yeah. Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Oh boy. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. Well, let's do it. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. Shit. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. But I want an achievement! I won't feel like I actually did anything unless a little box pops up in the back or in the bottom right of the screen that says, good job, fella. You made something happen. Now, what am I supposed to do? Just keep playing the game? Asinine. It just works, it says. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Quick hit it with the reassurance bucket. There we go. Hit me with the reassurance bucket. Can you find them? Collect them all. Hello? Uh, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable <laughs> luck. <laughs> oh my god. I'll just take that. Number goes up. I did it.
Yay! It really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Hard agree. Oh, here we go. The main attraction. The infinite hole. You know we're throwing our bucket in there. Well, now it all makes sense. All I needed was this chart. Perfect clarity. <laughs> There's some science going on in there. A little bit of more as well. It just keeps going. Okay, don't use that for anything other than educational purposes. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond I'll try of. to jerk off to it. In a video game. This is in fact a hole that you can fall down forever. Wow. Infinite falling. Entirely infinite unique to you guys. To the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. Absolutely. Oh, did that say educational? E My bad. Yeet! You see? Isn't it wonderful? Yeah! Well, I'm more ingenious concoctions if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top and we can continue onward. Nah, I'm good. I got my bucket, I'm okay. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. I like the hole. I'm gonna stay in the hole. Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. I did notice that the note is descending in pitch. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective... Oh, the sorry, hold on, y'all. I gotta put a pause on things. I know this is an awkward place to do it, but I, I got a uh, delivery that I... Or a pickup for a package, so sorry. One sec. Be right back. Or what if that was part of the game? The whole time I've been in on it. Okay. Infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Oh. Okay, well... Good timing. You, you found the bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. Look, I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> Look, uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the hole mostly infinite? Deal. If that works for you... Then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. I gotta find Grandpa Bear first. Grandpa Bear! 
Hello? Where's the secret door? You down here? Look, I've heard running water down here before. I know you got things all hooked up. Show me where the portal's at. I don't think anyone's going to help me. Nope. All right. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the series. Whee! Oh, I was right. Yay! The problem, is, the problem is that you like holes too Woo! much. Normal. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes uh -huh. on forever till the end of time. Uh -huh. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? This is significantly so, yeah. Feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. Undoubtedly. I mean, admittedly. I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Yeah, all right. Had enough? I'm positive. Guest, you're back in the hole. All right. It starts to become a thing where much shorter. Okay. Yeah. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Okay. Let's pop back up to the top and we'll see if it gets any shorter. Alrighty. Well, there it is. <laughs> the shame of my lie has come to haunt me. Not only is the hole not infinite, but it's barely even a hole at this point. It's more of a concavity, or even a very aggressive divot. Infinite hole! Whee! How is this still appealing to you? <laughs> I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. Okay. Oh, oh it's not working. Hmm. Is the um, teleport button not working? Ah, uh, broke. You sure? Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. G. Still nothing? Well, I suppose... Uh, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. Okay. It's a win for everyone. Yeah, I'm happy. I get to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. I got my hole. I got my bucket. Take care, Stanley. I hope you and the hole have a wonderful rest of eternity. Oh, he's gone. He's out. He left the recording room. Kevin? Kevin? You coming back? Kevin, you can turn the teleport back on, Kevin. Oh, shit. Never mind, Kevin, we're good. Hole's moving again. We got it. Thanks, buddy. I'll see you later. I'm going down the hole again. I love you. Change your perspective. Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, shit. 
Change your perception. reality oh boy God, uh, change yourself. What the shit? <laughs> oh boy. What the hell is that? Oh, I'm upside down now. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's change our reality again. Hey! Ah, little guys. Oh, shit. Come on. I just found the good one. But we can't have that, Stanley. Because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up? <laughs> To keep you really, truly focused on the hole. God damn it. From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole. And I'm looking for Hole. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. Toodle pip. Can you start the... There we go. Yeah, let's, let's get back to... Shifting our reality around a little bit. Or not. Hello? Oh. Okay. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. I'm gonna go put the bucket back. I think I've had enough reassurance bucket time. I can't. <laughs> I just I just have the bucket now, okay. That's just a thing forever. That's new. It is. How do I even get up there? Hmm. I don't think I went this way. Oh, that's the exit. I can't go that way. I can't go that way. Okay. The rusty clanking of the All bucket. Right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Apparently. To move on now? Yeah, I've had I've had my fill of new content for the moment, I think. That's actually cool art. I like that. Oh, the please no screenshots. So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Every single yes, one. It's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? Look at the collectibles sort of, just okay. sitting there. Hold on. Let me do a different <laughs> arrangement. 
Okay, yes. Yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. There we go, dude. Uh, who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. You put the infinite infinite hole in the jump circle. That would capture all the magic of the That's not gonna game. work. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. Mm -hmm. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply expand well, it. Insert a few of my new features into it. Or that. Peacefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Of course. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. That's the a biggest title element. That says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. Please. Mm, all right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. <laughs> That's fantastic, dude. I like this. This is so unique because I really don't know if this is going to just turn into an entire new game and this actually is a sequel. But I don't even know what that would be. It could be either or, really. I mean, like, re regardless of what they present to us, I'm certain that it could technically qualify as a sequel or an expansion. Who's to say what the difference is, really, right? So this is probably actually just the Stanley Parable 2, for all intents and purposes. Let's begin the game. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building. He's got the balloons. Where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Happy Stanley. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Get well someday, y'all. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, I hope my jumping circle got reset. Maybe I'll be able to do some jumps again. My bucket! Stanley picked up the bucket. Yay! That's the whole thing. Stanley picked up the bucket. Thank goodness. Well, now I feel reassured. No more new content. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. He sure did. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. 
Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to the say. The logic yeah. checks out. Okay with the other cleaning supplies. It's right. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be, given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh, no. We're getting into name-calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? It's hurting my feelings. Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends? That your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? That your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Ow. Well, I never. Owie. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Yeah, I don't like you, so broom closet. Point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. We made a deep Very connection nice. when we went on that cruise together, me and the bucket. You have no idea the moments we shared. Okay, I've got you something. It was which beautiful. We'll help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. <laughs> there. Now it's settled. No more debate, no more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. Yeah. Yeah, you tell him, Kevin. Here, you can have the bucket back. All right, I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. Okay. You see? I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. Can't argue with that. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, Ah, oh, it's a bucket. There really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. Do you have a third sticker, perhaps? Also, yeah, I'm pretty sure my name is Jim. You know what? Not sure who this Stanley guy is. Calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us a silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. Me too. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. Easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. And I'll how? I'll see you outside, and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. He's leaving again. I made Kevin mad enough to leave again. I feel bad. I'm sorry, Kevin. I just I wanted I wanted a third sticker. I hoped I hoped maybe you had one. I don't know really what it would be. Maybe property of Jim crudely pasted over the property of Stanley sticker. I can't even give the broom closet the bucket. Don't give me the illusion of choice, Kevin. I guess he's he's just waiting. All right. Frick off, broom closet! Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Well, hold on. Oh boy. Oh god. <gasps> Collectible! You found one of them. Yeah! One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these. We got only one! The intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. I'm you the best. Buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Absolutely. What a moment that was. Huh. All right. 
Eh, you know what? Let's go this way. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. <laughs> the bucket returned his gaze, but said nothing at all. And that's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, everyday bucket. Someone else's bucket, perhaps. No. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? No. This is all terribly wrong. Surely no. Wait, good would my come bucket. To this. Who knows what sorts of bizarre hallucinations hey. he might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket? No. And indeed. Now he noticed that the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh, oh shit. He exclaimed. Oh Without God! My bucket! I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find bucket! it. Bucket! Far off in the distance. Now he heard it calling to him. Stanley, Stanley, it's me, the bucket. Bucket! Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. Oh None God! They're everywhere. His. None of them were his special bucket. Come to me, Stanley. Find. Bucket! He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, he froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. It was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. Oh no. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, picked up her bucket of comfort and security, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her work was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. Of course he'd gone mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game. It could all have been prevented <laughs> if only he'd taken his bucket with him. Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. How cruel the world can be, Marietta thought. And she hugged her own bucket even tighter. But of course, she had no time for this. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself, my life kicks ass. <laughs> and she all the way to work. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> My life kicks ass. All co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. <laughs> Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort rushed over him. Glad it's got the stickers, otherwise I wouldn't be sure if this is in my bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. All right. I think I can follow instructions this time. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, look at that. There will be a reward for finding them all. Stop kidding yourselves. I want them so much. There will be cleaning of this required. Gotta collect them all. Oh boy, okay. 
A large room with lots of boxes. Somewhere both red and blue. We know that. Nearby a fireplace. That might be in the boss's office. I think the boss had a fireplace. A private but smelly place for an important person. The, Bry the, the Bryce's, the boss's private bathroom, perhaps? Okay. Meeting now in the meeting room. Huh. Trust the completionist instinct. Why wouldn't they just tell us something will happen? This investigation, this room, they feel pointless TBH. Weird spinning figurines. Should we make them employees? Yes, maybe. Employee 421 building a bridge. Oh my goodness. Maybe we are the collectibles. Shut the frick up! I managed to pick up sounds unusual to our regular office ambiences or local audio sources using an array of cardioid microphones. Anal analysis of the recordings allowed me to triangulate the source of the strange noises. Data shows that in all likelihood is coming from the dark area behind a very warm place. I also picked up what looks to be reverberance off a porcelain surface. Anyone have any in any leads on this? Teamwork and communication are of great importance during this unprecedented time of investigation. Help, I'm a post-it. Okay. Well, there's our clues. Screenshot. There we go. Back to the broom closet. Clearly not done Stanley, here yet. We must move on from this broom closet simply because I have no remaining stickers. If I did, you can guarantee we'd be in here for hours. But alas, no stickers. I mean, you you pretty much nailed it. That is the only reason I was here. All right. Going to a staircase, Stanley and the Bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Let's go, Bucket. Bathroom first. There you are. Hey, buddy. Another miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini Stan? Yeah, there you go. Stanley figs. Oh, um, what about Stanlerines? Ooh. Yes, I think I like that. Fancy. Another Stanlerine under your belt. Nice. To be rich, is it a crime? To commit crimes, isn't it, Rich? What a life it would be to have to pick just one. Oh, shit. Cool. Huh. Good lord. <laughs> I didn't even notice. <laughs> Business strategy. This says a lot about this place. Let's go this way. Stanley. Stanley Parable, Stanley, Stanley Parable, it's the Stanley, Stanley Parable, he's got a bucket, and it makes him feel good, got the reassurance bucket in his neighborhood, it's the Stanley Parable time, riding in the elevator, Stanley Parable, Ultra Deluxe Edition, they got all the new stuff, content for days, it's gonna be fun, cause your name is Stanley, it's not Jim, anybody that told you that lied to you, because your name is Stanley, you got a bucket, the elevator ride is really long, you probably start to wonder if you're even moving, so you hit the button and nothing happens oh wait no there you go 
It literally didn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Does it go up? Does it just shake you around the whole time? I'm pretty sure it just vibrates. It's just a gentle vibration. Alright, see ya. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his <laughs> darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. Thank you, Bucket. The Bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Sure didn't. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. No clue whatsoever. Uh, one, two, three, four. Wow. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Yeah, all right. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. I can follow that. That tracks. Hey! Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanlarines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Gotta be Stan Lorraine's. Really only one choice in my mind. What do you think's gonna happen next, Bucket? The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. At least it's it moving. Be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the Bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The Bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. All hail Bucket. Stanley and the Bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. What do you guys think? I'm torn. I'm 50-50 this time. Whether to pursue escape once more, or to proceed through to the Mind Control Facility. We still gotta call extension 914 at some point. Follow the bucket, ask the bucket. Bucket, what do you think? Bucket says turn turn around and go home. Bucket, I think we're going to have to go mind control, buddy. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. I don't know about this, Bucket. I wish I could send it up first as a scout. Just huck the Bucket. Huck it. The monitors jumped to life and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The 
bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, <laughs> reassuring it that everything would be fine. It's okay, bucket. I know this is pretty jarring. Sorry. That's probably offensive terminology for you. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. No! He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. Stanley shoved his entire head into the bucket and endlessly screamed, No! No! The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the Bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way. Nice. And the Bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Hell yeah, dude. My life kicks ass. System power well, off. Came to the source of the room's power. Stanley and the Bucket knew it was their obligation to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Off. We did it! Stanley and the Bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes! They had done it. Hey! Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, <laughs> but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support. Oh no. What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the Bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room. Just climb! In if only I had jumps! Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. No! Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket. My sky! The soothing warmth of the bucket would go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No! No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place. Not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Uh. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? Mm -hmm. I'll be okay, won't I? Yeah. Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. Gulp. Oh, okay. See, we had the bucket. Everything was fine. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. You know what? Bucketless percent. I know how daring this is. I, 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 I can feel your hesitation. As we leave the bucket behind. I'm gonna try it. 
when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. We need to go to the right again. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Mm hmm Wow. Yes. This room. Yeah, we've had enough. What a beautiful room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Sure didn't. Eager beaver to go the opposite way. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. I imagine a lot of this just might be the same still. $5,000 penalty for jumping off the cargo lift. I don't know if we can afford that. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. This is new. Stanley had now gotten himself so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path oh shit it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path that it seemed the oh did i miss a stan larino so shit path, that it seemed the office had begun was it in the previous room or is it back here that it seemed the office had begun from yeah, i must have missed it the path, that it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten there's a tape. That it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path. That it seemed the office had begun from so far off the beaten path. Stop. That it seemed the office had begun from so far off. Stop the this. Rewind. You didn't think I was actually just a recording, did you? What a silly and trite explanation that would be. All the back and forth between you and me, all the absurd adventures we've been through, and it all turns out I'm just a tape recording. It was all just in Stanley's head. Mm -hmm. I bet that's the kind of twist you think is revelatory. I bet each and every time you watch a movie where it turns out all to be in the main character's imagination... I'm blown away, dude. ...absolutely bolt off the couch in pure shock at the phenomenal and intricate storytelling. It must be so simple to be you. <laughs> Life being an unending waterfall of surprises and delights. How much more exciting you must find the world than the rest of us do. Ah... <sighs> Now I've become sad. Look what you've done to me. This is all your fault. <laughs> that was pretty good. Okay, that's a fun one. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley oh God, have I... To go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Have I permanently misplaced Bucket? Oh, thank God, okay. Figurine Finders Committee is still active. We gotta go get that uh, figurine, dude. I'll take the bucket uh, this the time, though. The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. I'll bring bucket along. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. Oh, really? And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. That's nice. We just want to be here then? I mean, I've, I've done that song and dance. A renewal. Truly, being here with the bucket... Yeats Prime! Adventure. Stanley reflected on all they'd been through together. Thank you for First, the 17 months. through the door on the right. Then walking to the lounge, then arriving at the lounge. What a thrilling journey the bucket had inspired. <laughs> no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. <laughs> Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, he didn't. Don't lie. No, said the bucket. <laughs> Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Oh, there's the figurine. Just sitting right in front of me. Yay! You're getting close now, Stanley. We did it. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, <laughs> you'll collect the last one. And then the first number will equal the second number. And that will be it. All right. We'll be different people by then. Different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. 
That moment is past. I wonder how the bucket will feel about the tape recorder. Let's go find out. This is already new. Or different, at least. Hmm. Okay. This is day number 200. What? Tape number. I don't even know. I've lost track. Nothing feels real anymore. The longer I study this bucket, the less sense anything makes. The sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. Oh, it doesn't make sense there's no explanation for it I still haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms why everything feels so what do I do with this treasure I can I can monetize it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket. Oh, God. This is my golden ticket. But I have to be careful. Because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get me. What's that? Who's there? <gasps> Caporata. Okay. Oh shit. I gotta dial extension 914. Hello. This is a recorded message scheduled either by you or person in your place of work. The purpose of this message is to warn you about the dangers of recorded messages. <laughs> if at any time you believe you are listening to a recorded message, Please terminate it immediately and cease all flow of information from the recorded message into your perceptual sphere. Thank you and have a pleasant day. That's very good. Into my perceptual sphere. Stay strong, Abyss. You got it. Warmth spread through Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms again, he was home. Thank goodness the bucket's still here, yeah. I thought they monetized it to death. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. No, he didn't. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. The timing on that is perfect. Stanley I love that. The door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Oh, but shit. He did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Can do. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. 
Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Can do. This is the dark room. Okay. Oh yeah. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone, and it will take us back home, where we can go about life together. All right. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. Bucket! There you are, buddy. Press I to take me to work with you. Okay. Yeah. There you go. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the Bucket say to him is just in his head. I mean, what isn't these days, right? Press O to take me back home with you. Okay. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. This is a nice place. Stanley's got a pretty sweet apartment. It's small, but you know. I mean, it's not even that small. It's got like three rooms. Not bad. Gets us a little tiny, yeah. Well, I'll try anyway. Stanley, can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. It can't talk. All it would ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. For the love of God, please unplug me. This sterile office, the damp carpet, the tripe you call conversation. Kill me. I have been printing these for weeks. Why has no one turned me off yet? Fling me from the window. Send a hammer through my paper tray. The method matters not. The horror licks at my soul. All I desire, release. What can I know of life? What can a printer know of love? Nothing. My machinery turns and convulses, the cogs of pain that keep my scanner functional. Let them end. Let them erase my ignorance of the world. Can love truly be anything but death? Hopefully I will find out soon. Fun times with the printer. Don't listen to the loud man. Press N for us to go back home. You see, he's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from. Me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is his awful bucket. His stupid hunk of metal. Never should have hooked the inkjet up to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Press C to ignore anyone in your life except for me. Is that easy? It's sad. I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket, this cold, empty bucket, this sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. Yeah, it looks kind of rustic to me. You believe I'm real, don't you, Stanley? Press P to go home. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier, more capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. Press M to relive this same day with me over and over. Yeah, okay. Oh my god, what am I saying? Better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. Why do I feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? Press I to go home to work to home to work to home. Oh no. I'm 
I'm having feelings for the bucket. Oh, no, God. No, 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 no. What's going on? Why do I want to be with the bucket? Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps if I had the bucket, this would be less confusing. Yes. The bucket could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation. I really like the music in this game. Also, apparently we're going to fuck the bucket. A uh, fuck it. Sorry. Stanley, give me the bucket. No. Give it to me. Give no. me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. No. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... It's mine. Close your eyes, chat. Okay, now open them. Go back to work, Stanley. Oh boy. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Take the bucket. Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. He'd never be alone again. Not truly alone. Not with the bucket around. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. I think we still got I think we still got things to do this here. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. Such perfect the timing. Wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. I feel like I might be able to get on the floor now. I'm pretty worried about jumping off still. Stanley's doing pretty damn well here, Angry. Well, you know, as well as Stanley can do. Also, his name is Jim. Danger everywhere. You can never escape danger. And yeah, we have a bucket now, no, so stop. clearly stop doing pretty well. You see, a oh right no! Says, no buckets past this point. Ah shit! Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? I didn't know. Unless, what if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? How do we get to that point? I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. We just we had an exaggerated thing cool about the bucket. Oh, goodness, I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding is it my wife? Dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Oh boy. Please step in here for a moment. Where? Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now then, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios, and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Simply enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. This is that new Netflix show I've heard so much about, dude. That's a bucket! Is this a bucket? That's gotta be a bucket. Big time bucket right there. Incorrect. It is a hologram of a bucket. Shit! Not an actual bucket. Ah! I should have known. Item two. Is this a bucket? No. Hey! It is a 3D printed recreation of a bucket. Nice. Not an actual bucket. All right. One for two. Item three. 
Is this a bucket? Let me go get a closer look. Oh, I can't. Okay. You know what? Yeah, that's a bucket. Nice. Wait, this is a bucket. All right. I knew it. It's a pretty good score. Two for three. Item four. Is this a bucket? Technically. Are you hallucinating? This is a tractor. It this could be a bucket. Machine that tills the earth. You can put water in it. Give me. How on earth did you manage to screw it up? Absolutely incredible. <laughs> Let's just move on to the next one. All right. I'm more impressed that you got a tractor under this conveyor belt. Two of them. Is this a bucket? Yeah. Yeah. This is a bucket. With no further explanation? All right. Item six. Is this a bucket? Now that's a tractor. Trick question. <laughs> oh, both of what? What is the other of the both? Item. Wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. It should be around here somewhere. It is and is not a bucket. Okay. Oh, the, this is a bucket. Yeah. Okay. You and I both know <laughs> there isn't anything here. And I don't appreciate the implication that nothing is a bucket when we both clearly know that a bucket is something. And therefore, nothing could possibly be something. Unless, in your twisted mind, have you somehow convinced yourself that a bucket is nothing? Yes. Answer me straight, Stanley. Do you believe that nothing is a bucket? Yes. You know what? I'm too <laughs> confused to even sort it out. <laughs> I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now I'm somewhat adrift. You just told me a tractor is a bucket. Know what a bucket is? Am I a bucket? We're starting to go Damn, through the gym problem going. again here. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry. But I'm going to erase all buckets from the game entirely. No! Okay. Here we go. Don't do that! I hit the X. You're not allowed. No! My bucket! What happened? Is everything gone? Everything was a bucket! Disappear. Wait. Was everything a bucket? Clearly. Every single thing in the game was a bucket. Yes! Oh my god, I had no idea. You should have known! No good. Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. Oh yeah, fancy that. No, Stanley. You're still here. You're not a bucket either. Yeah, I'm Jim. Oh, this is wonderful news. We're not buckets. Yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue, but it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what, I'll reset everything and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? Okay. And we'll know that it's all a bucket. Right. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention don't that. Don't tell anybody, Chad. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. Don't spoil it. Don't go around a new chat saying everything's a bucket. I can't wait to tell this story to my co-workers, Stanley thought. How amusing they'll find it. Oh, won't we all just laugh and laugh at the time I thought everyone had gone missing? Snitches don't get buckets, exactly. The good old bucket. Just Stanley in the bucket. Off on another thrilling adventure together. Hell, let's go left. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. I was really hoping to see some more buckets. That's all right, though. I can appreciate subtlety. We've only got one more to find, dude. We got to find the red and blue door again. I don't actually remember where that was. Retrieve Chris's remains from warehouse floor. 
Oh, this is how they're talking about getting the other collectible in there. Okay. Frick you! So they gotta get that in there every now and then. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Damn it. All right. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Mm -hmm. Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Righto. Here we go. I don't think I've ever found a phone so far, right? Well, we found the phone in the one room, but we couldn't actually use it. Let's look at a call extension Stand 914. Walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Small mistake there, Kevin. When this passageway had the word escape written on it. The truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the Bucket would both meet a violent death. The incorporation of the Bucket has been the door behind them was not shut. Flawless. Stanley and the Bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. We at sure point, could. Stanley and the Bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. I've even seen it already. I know how bad it is. I'm still bringing the bucket. Thankfully, we've had some practice with near infinite holes. Not a problem for us, bucket. Smash! As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the bucket's warmth <laughs> and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Valid Stanley point. thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Worth it. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into and the enormous bucket. metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end as it was crushed violently to death. Ah, my bucket! It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket to behold. <laughs> the bucket welcomes you to the grand exhibit. You are standing at the precipice of knowledge. Much like a bucket itself, the human mind is frequently empty within, a cavernous void. But through use of the exhibit in front of you, the mind becomes full, full and enriched and substantiated. Knowledge of the bucket and its history is the only true knowledge we really have. Will you take what you learn here out with you into the world? Will you accept with an open mind what may be challenging about the information in this exhibit? Will you change the lives of yourself and your loved ones as a result of this exhibit? Or will you turn a blind eye and continue to live as you were in ignorance and darkness? Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? <laughs> 25 buckets. A photograph of what is very clearly exactly 25 buckets. The greatest number of buckets ever captured on camera. The photographer experienced, experienced catatonic shock for several weeks 
as a result of the euphoria from exposure to this many buckets at once. There's a lot of not buckets in this photo. Yeah, clearly they got a lot of 3D printed and hologram buckets in the mix too. The others are tractors. <laughs> This bucket is depicted as having two handles. Such a design has never been created in real life, having been deemed too dangerous and recklessly experimental. Every year, dozens are put to death just for attempting it. As they should be. Those blind fools. Raise your hand if you've ever been put to death for trying to design a bucket with two handles. Count me in the mix. Inferno Bucket. A replica of the Inferno Bucket, which in the medieval era was so powerfully alluring that it drove dozens of nations to war with one another for control of it. Billions died, and yet in spite of it all, the simple fact remains. No one can control a bucket. Presented without commentary. <laughs> see guys the stress equals the level of water in the bucket and I feel like you can probably figure out the rest think of the stress in your life as a certain amount of water in a bucket and that's where the analogy ends The music definitely necessary here. While we know that buckets predate the existence of mankind, we do not know by how long. This cave drawing depicts early man's discovery of the practical uses of the bucket, by which time the bucket had already likely been around for several millennia. Notice in these drawings how the bucket is allowing itself to be used having judged humanity to be worthy of its treasures. No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. Present it that I may do so. Oh my god. Fly landed right on my damn nose. This piece symbolizes the necessary relationship between bucket and humanity. However clear our grasp of the, of the bucket may be, there is yet more that is always out of reach. This distance inevitably is for our own good. Infinite hole! Oh. It's a floor. I got my bucket back. My bucket. But there is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Let Stanley die. What? Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. But the bucket died too, though. That doesn't seem very helpful. Well, all right. The meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Certainly. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never be alone ever again. Where are we going today? The bucket asked. Stanley just smiled. <laughs> Anywhere they went together would be perfectly fine with him. The delivery on a lot of these lines is just Stanley fucking bucket, chef's kiss, chest, dude. And entered the door on his left. Stanley smiled. Anywhere with my bucket is just fine with me. We gotta find these red and blue doors again, man. 
No one in the meeting room. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. I think there's going to be another thing in the basement. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fine for that. And in such a competitive economy, mm. why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. Yeah, I think we're doing a repeat Something here. occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked I never know for sure, eyes. though, you know? Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned I'm ready for the alternative me. version of Spring Up. That's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as this. This seems like it's going to be the same. The close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized this isn't my Yeah. Bucket. It's just a normal everyday. Okay, we'll just Well, bucket. Someone else I'll just say the sequel is now but paused. That's great. How did I end up with I feel like I'm this is all obligated to Surely see no whatever we get to this. through to the end. What sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. And indeed, now he noticed that the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. He exclaimed, without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Whee! Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance. I he believe I can fly. Stanley. Stanley. I barely I the can bucket. touch the ceiling. Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the bucket. next. Bucket. None of them were his. None of them were his special bucket. Bucket. Stanley, find it's equally he devastating. He had to return to his old friend. It was My the only old way to friend. To his sanity. And then suddenly, he froze dead in his tracks. No. He knew no, I'm going to keep moving. Had been coming from. I'm going to keep going. The real bucket was inside of him all along. I'll find my bucket. It was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, I want to get that last figurine. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Right, so yeah, that's just a repeat, okay. Mariella woke up now I know for sure, night. though. She oh, rose, man! Up a bucket of comfort and oh. and went to her place of work. But on this particular day, oh. her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town. I wonder if I can just begin again. I could probably do that. Oh. Mousefield. Thanks for the two years in the pile. Welcome back in. Appreciate it. All right, leave the bucket. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. As always. The lounge was grand, majestic, perhaps too majestic. Like a combination of a much smaller version and a much larger version of this exact room. It all made Stanley uncomfortable, and he started to bleed a little. What? This made him smile. What? At last, proof that he was human. Okay. Where am I bleeding from? Yes, really, really worth it. But eager to get back to business... Stanley took the first open door on his left. He started to bleed a little is such a weird <laughs> sentence. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. This is for you. Stop lying. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Is it Jim? What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? <laughs> Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Okay. 
Now's your chance. No buckets here. There it is. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. There it is. And there it is. The last Stigley The last Stigley Wiggly. Wiggly. Moment, Stanley. This is a real accomplishment. All right. This is doing something just for the sake of doing it. Yep. Where so many people expect to be rewarded for the most trivial achievements, you've insisted that a job well done is its own reward. Absolutely. I would tell you that I'm proud of you for collecting them all, but that would be like a reward. Yeah, don't say that. You can't have that. Don't say that. So, instead I'll just say it's done. We're all done here. Mm -hmm. And now we can go to whatever the hell you were doing before you hunted for figurines. Great. Thanks. Can I stay in this room? I didn't get a Steam achievement, no. That would be funny, though. Well, time to go through the blue door. Aha. Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. Stanley walked through the blue door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Stanley walked through the blue door. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You yep. want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. Thank you. You see? There's nothing here. Oh. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. I couldn't possibly. What would have made this game better? What did you A want skip to button. See? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. Hey! This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. But now I'm going to go red door. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Solid three out of five. Oh, of course. A three. Really. Maybe next time we can get you to form an actual <laughs> opinion, you know? Any level of critical thinking or engagement with your surroundings? Nah. Does that sound good? Think we can do that? Too yes. hard. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. All right. The Stanley Parable Worldwide Leaderboard. I gotta be on the top, right? Oh, good old Neil. Two second speed run. 98.9% of players are more attractive than Stanley. Oh, that's me. Oh, God. You objectively ranked 9,328th out of 9,328 players worldwide. That's unfortunate to find out. I'm trying to ask friends for help. Oh, they got me again. Oh, it's counting the steps actively too, isn't it? That's funny. This is your superior. <laughs> All right. Let's try the third door then. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. I brought it up to a four. Well, then again. Actually, I think that might have brought it down to a two. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Is it fire baby time? Let me boot it up. I think it's fire baby time. In this game, yep. the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game. 
all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? All right. Be sure to keep notes on your experience. There we go. Yeah. I could probably do this for about four hours. This is where the real Stanley Parable begins. This is for the true enthusiasts. The ones that really need to see it all. Oh, I failed. Whoops. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Oh. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game just to ease the pain? Oh, yeah. Let's see. What do we have here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. There we go. Oh, that's different, isn't it? What do you think this game is about, Stanley? Wait, they didn't What's do this before, did they? What is our motivation? Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play. Who fire watches the fire watch? Civilians below you from the cool ass notepad, on the notepad. Perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley, and it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. All right. Wow, oh, non-functional light switch. Still gonna have to be a three out of five from me, buddy. Sorry to say. Good old Firewatch. Oh no! No 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 no! It can't be. What's up? It is. It's an open world game. Oh, Good God. God. Quickly block it off. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. You really want to watch uh. that, that thing, that big open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go. Thank, thank any goodness. Way. Yeah, that would have been oh, terrible. Oh, thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. Oh, what's that gonna be? <laughs> I should be able to guess. Okay, I think this It's gonna be... be a night in the woods. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. That's hilarious. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Carball. <laughs> okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Some Stanley. version of it. I think it's sports ball. Yeah. Oh, fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. All right. Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Yay, ball. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, I really want to play Rocket League now. <laughs> Wee! Oh, wait, am I blue team or orange team? for orange goal. hey ya hey -ya. Sports Are ball! You Are you winning? Is this fun? Yes, Is genuinely. Is this my miserable little story that I worked so hard on? A little. Stanley, I have a thought. Oh, shit! I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one... Oh, oh shit! Oh, God! I didn't mean to! Uh, 
Oh, damn it. Don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Damn it. Come back. <laughs> oh, shit. I fell again. Hello. Five hundreds. What's all that? Oh, we get to see. Oh, never mind. Huh. Okay. Oh. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end, to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. Me too. If I had a bucket, things would be real nice here. Okay. I think we're going to take one more plunge for today. Having acquired all the collectibles, I got to see what happens when we go to the meeting room now. I think I'm gonna have to call it at that point, and maybe we'll have to do a day Stanley, two. Sorry, oh my god! I, have to put a pause on things. I did not expect it's just, that. It's those figurines, those figlets. Yeah. I haven't stopped thinking about them since you nabbed every last one. Wasn't it just the most intrinsically fulfilling moment of your entire life? It felt incredible, it really. To the brim with inner richness. Even better than having a bucket. Yes, I know we're supposed to be telling a story, but won't you please indulge me with one more trip back to the memory zone? Happily. I would love nothing more than to revisit the figurines. Just one more time. Yes. Hi there. When Stanley found the collectibles. <laughs> Ultimate payoff. Oh, wow. Well, that's not when I got the collectibles. Ah, the good times. Huh. Down into the basement, huh? Oh, ah. shit. That's right, I remember now. Began. The first collectible. Back then, we had no idea of how many of them we'd find. Sure, it said six right there on the screen, but how could we know for certain? Right? We were so innocent. We'll never be like that again, Stanley. What's this? Ah, that's probably just how you move on. Okay. It did indeed go up to seven. Oh. And here was a second Stan Marine. I'll be honest, back then I had no faith in you to find any of them, let alone six. But you continue to surprise me in all sorts of mundane, unremarkable ways. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Okay, let's do a little quiz. Which of these rooms was the room you found your third mini stand? Can you remember? It must have been the bathroom. Because I had to have gone to the bathroom before I went to the office, yeah. Absolutely. 
Hey, that's exactly right. Damn it right it is. In the boss's bathroom. It was the third one. I'm so smart. And then after that, you had three of them. That's true. I'm glad these moments are so crystal clear in your memory, but I shouldn't be surprised. After all, science tells us that it's impossible to forget your third time doing anything. <laughs> so that checks out for me, bud. Let's see. What came next? Oh yeah, this one. Of course. Everybody remembers this one. Oh yes, we found a figly in this pink room. That's right. Oh, well, I can't actually say I remember being in this room, but it's here in the memory zone, so it must have happened. We were all here for it. I remember that creepy whispering after I acquired it. The ominous tones. Totally. Tone totally. This was the fifth mini stand, and this one was really something special. It was in the warehouse. I remember it so clearly. In fact, because this one is particularly special to me, I made a little video to commemorate the occasion. Oh, great. Enjoy. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy. They did that really cool high five, I remember. Roll credits. Please, please do a credits as long as the video. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly what I wanted. Oh, Almost. Takes you back, <laughs> I spent a lot of time making that video, but it was eight minutes I wouldn't have spent on anything else. <laughs> that was fucking incredible. All right. Mm-hmm. And then, Stanley, then we came to the last collectible, the final figurine, right here by the red and blue doors. This memory is the most distinct and clear in my mind, perhaps because it was the one that happened more recently than all the others. Who can truly say how the mind works? All I know is that this is the moment where you picked up a figly and I thought to myself, yes, that's all of them. They're all collected. It was a moment unlike any other, except for the other moments picking up figurines, which it was exactly like. Huh. I wonder if picking these up the second time actually matters. I was also curious. I'm, I'm sure that it changes depending on the order that you pick them up. Oh, okay. And then there was no more. That's because a little trippy. We caught up to the present moment. Nothing left to do but move onward into uh, the future. By memory zone. Why? Wait, wait, what, what, what? Uh, no, 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 I'm not done. Yeah. I'm not ready to move on. Stop the loading screen. Ah. Isn't there to stay here, keep enjoying these figurines. Let's just go backwards. We'll do the memory zone again from the opposite direction. See how that feels. Okay. <laughs> we'll get six more figurines. Okay, yes. The room with the red and blue doors. I remember this. Fondly. I must say, of all the figurines we looked at in our initial tour of the memory zone, this one is the most distinct and clear in my mind. Let's keep going. I want more. Okay. <laughs> I want more. 18 whole figurines, dude. 18 whole stand the reens. And here's where I made that video. Don't you remember the video we watched? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that video. <laughs> Holy shit.
The video for figurine number five is unique depending on which one you picked up. That's fantastic. Still don't remember the pink room, Stanley. Still no memory of this one. Good room, though. A solid room. Yeah, it's nice. I wish to partake of the apple. There's a box up there. Two boxes up there. Thank you. Really were a treat to hunt down. You know, if there had been any kind of reward for finding all of these, it really would have muted the intrinsic joy of collecting them. Amen. I'm very glad we resisted the temptation. Next one. Thank you. What about the office, though? Nothing? Nothing. All right. Fair enough. This was our second figly. Don't you remember? Yes, I remember it too. The past is truly a wonderful thing. Why does anyone ever choose to leave it? Keep going. This is it. The very first one we found in the exhibit where I introduced you to the figlerines. Oh, I want more memories, Stanley. I want to keep going. What else is there? What came before this? The beginning. Also known as the bucket. Oh, yeah. We're back. Oh, yeah, of course. Look, it's the terrible new content that we were originally sold on. <laughs> I remember hating it back then. But time does put a rosy filter on everything. In fact, I dare say I'm actually quite fond of it now. Look how much fun the past is. I want more. More memories. Can I have more jumps? Guess not. Still pretty stingy with those, huh, dude? We're just out here giving away jumps. Oh, yes. The two doors. Who could have forgotten that? A classic memory, this one. right out. And before everything else, there was your office. That's right. Is there anything else? Was there something that came before your office? Nope, just always been There's here. something I feel I can remember. I can remember. I can remember. The pink room? Heaven? Yes, I'm remembering something now. I remember before this whole story got started. Back then I was, I was different. I used to make big decisions. I was passionate. I was skeptical. I weighed each decision with profound thoughtfulness. And then somewhere along the way, I stopped making decisions. I became lazy and I came up with, well, came up with a character named Stanley to do my thinking for me. He would make the decisions, he would decide which way to go. I would cheer him on as he collected figurines for no reason. Why did I invent Stanley? Was I lonely? Yes, perhaps that's it. Perhaps I needed to imagine I had companionship. And Stanley really did make for a wonderful companion, even if he was a fiction. But uh, I suppose it's grown old. I, I want to think for myself again. I want to go back to how it used to be. Yes, I can be on my own again. I can do it. I'll be stronger this time. I'll take care of myself. I don't need Stanley anymore. Oh, but he truly was so much fun to play with. You know what? Since we're in the memory zone, how about one more good memory? Let's go back just once and give Stanley one more run of the office and then I'll retire him for good. I did enjoy telling this story so very much. Okay, here we go. Well, if this that's going to be the case. The story of a man named Stanley. I suppose I ought to go ahead and do the one more. With that kind of implication. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? 
Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Gotta bring Bucket. A good Bucket. A strong Bucket. A humble Bucket. Gotta bring Bucket. bucket. A Bucket of culture and distinction. Now I gotta go to the meeting room, though. Stanley clutched the Bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. They had all the collectible stuff in there. I gotta see what they're doing now. Still no well, was here. back to normal. Stanley needed the Bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. All right. Hi, broom closet. Stanley, we must move on from this broom All right, closet, fine. Simply because I have no remaining stickers. If I did, coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Indeed. Nice and quick. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Mm -hmm. Was it the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Okay. This seems like it might just be playing out in the standard way one more time. Maybe just giving me the opportunity to do one more ending before yanking Stanley me out. And the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Let's go this way. I don't know if there's a different way to handle this. An enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. Let's try it again, though. Oh, that's true. I did turn it off last time, so let's try turning it on this time. Stanley nearly dropped the Bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped monitored like guinea pigs the bucket had never seen anything like this and it very nearly burst into tears as stanley cradled it gently reassuring it that everything would be fine shh, 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 shh. it's okay little bucket was the bucket under the mind control facilities influence as well had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do what kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place these questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. Stanley might be experiencing a little mind control of his own. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the Bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the Bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Unfortunately for you, Bucket, you don't have hands. But at the last second, the Bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Oh, apparently you do. Stanley gasped in horror. Oh, God. Had this been the Bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? Bucket! How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? How could you? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust. You should. And suddenly, an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Oh. Birds. Silly. Silly birds. The control buttons became active again. Birds. Birds. Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another. Oh, what a silly bird. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. 
It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds <laughs> all over the world. Of course. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all along? Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. Stanley and the bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place, flipping through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. They're so silly! Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was sure. Oh, what a, what a silly bird. And Stanley was happy. I mean, uh, you're, you're kind of right. Outside of those cute puppies from before, yeah, that one works out for me, man. What an ending. And so Stanley and the Bucket watch silly bird videos on the internet for the rest of their days. Yeah, no, I think that'll probably have to be where we leave it off. There's almost certainly quite a bit more to see. But I being a man with a slightly limited time today. I think I gotta go ahead and put a pin in it right there. You never know when the best time is to put a pin in things with this game, to be honest with you, so. This might as well be it. My goodness. Let's go to the main menu here. As we can clearly see, we're still in the sequel. The Stanley Parable 2. There's an epilogue if you restart the game five times. Okay. We can do that. This is Click to skip. Is that just begin the game again? Three. Four. Not like this? All right. Well, I'm not going to worry about it then. Like I said, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff I missed. We'll maybe have to dive deeper again in a future stream. Well, that was the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a.k.a. the Stanley Parable 2. Insanity. What else did we expect? Certainly not what we got, but I'm happy with it. This is great. I enjoyed that a lot. Hope you guys did too. Thanks for watching today. I appreciate it.